Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And I hope this video finds everyone doing well and in good spirits. Okay guys, let me tell you what I will be sharing with you this morning. It is a well requested uh, video. Every time I do a weekly meal and I have the uh, baked spare ribs on it, I always would get some requests and stuff that ask me to uh, show how I do the uh, do my baked spare ribs. I tell them that I have a video up for them and some of you for it, and some of you guys have tried it and you liked it. But I put that video up when I was um, first uh, started out on YouTube, and really, um, I, I think I filmed the video myself. I was real proud of it and all that, but I knew it, it. I needed to revise it, revise it. So that's what I will be doing this morning. And uh, I told you guys that I was gonna put up another uh, video, and it was. A, I'm doing this. Uh, the season and stuff that I did on the spare ribs was about the same, but the uh, way I'm gonna cook it is a little different. But really, truly, it's the same. But I'm just using a a different method so you can just see how easy it really is to do the absolute best baked spare ribs you ever had. So um what I'm gonna do guys I'm going to tell you uh um I'm gonna show you the, the meats the ribs that I'll be using and they're the uh, St. Louis that St. Louis style Spare ribs, I like that type. I like that uh, uh, cut. And uh, but you can do this with any spare ribs, which I have. It's with like when I took do them out on the grill, and you can't find these kind, and, and they're getting so expensive now. I may not even be looking for them. And uh, I got two slabs of them over there, guys. But I think I'm only gonna do a slab and a half, simply because Tuck bought me a new gadget for Christmas. And I want to try that out. And if it works all right and know and it's good, you know I would share it with you guys. But I got to uh, test it out for my, uh, for myself before I go recommending it to some, anyone else, someone else. So I probably just be cooking like a half a slab of these ribs. Ribs. And the reason I cooked uh, two slab guys because we all I always when I bake them in the oven like that, I always uh, try to have enough for another meal. And uh, and then it they're just good. It always turn out turn out good. And I uh, when I put them in the freezer like that, so I was like, hey, I start getting smart with that, and just bake enough for two meals. So um, we got the ribs and stuff there, guys. So let me tell you something about the uh, uh, seasoning that you're gonna be using. Now you use the, the, the how you gonna make these ribs really really pop is all your favorite seasoning that you use on your ribs that you know that's uh works real good that's what you're going to use but the uh, method that the way the way that i cook these ribs i think that's what make them well i really know that's what make them over the top the way i bake them in the oven so guys let me tell you what i'm what i will be doing and then when i come back on i put the seasons on the uh ribs and and uh, show you how I got a, I got my pan over there. I'll tell you about that when I get to it. But let me tell you the the seasoning that I have on I'm going to be using in case someone don't know the types don't have a special blends of seasoning that they use on it. And uh, I'll share mine with you. Okay, guys, I got this uh, old fashioned uh, rib rub. I don't use several different rib rubs, and you know, I, cause you guys probably have seen some of them. But I found this one, guys, and I mean, it's 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 got the perfect blend of spices and whatever and all, all that for the rib, cause I think probably the last two uh rib uh last two uh a weekly meal not that I did the ribs in. I had this seasoning on. I know I don't I don't had it on it maybe twice since I did a weekly meal and I got some uh that's some all-purpose seasoning 
and it's and you can use whatever all-purpose seasoning that you normally use but I'm using this one because it's really good what's the name of that Gary the gospel mm -hmm. yes uh -huh. uh, yeah I'm, I, I, I'm glad I found that one and then I got some uh, paprika paprika whichever way you call it, want to say it you know people are always saying it's a uh, paprika paprika uh, you understand what it is so I got that but let me back up a minute with this here rub, uh, uh, this rub, I probably have, I'm going to have all this stuff mixed in a bowl. So let me back up and tell you how much I'm going to have mixed in this bowl when I come back. After I clean up my ribs and trim them up and whatever, get them all washed up and ready to season, I'm going to come back and show you how I'm going to do that. But I'm going to be putting approximately two to two and a half tablespoons of that there. Uh, rub in it just for that amount of ribs and then I will probably be putting two teaspoons of that um, all-purpose seasoning in there and approximately two teaspoons of the uh, paprika and uh, I got some of my favorite you know uh, no salt seasoning over there guys that that stuff you know when you is on a low sodium diet and you want the flavor Something that's gonna bring out the flavor, but you're not gonna have all that salt in there. Just or you can well, a lot of times it just don't take no more about a, a small amount of salt. And but those uh, those spices and stuff, or herbs and stuff, that combination they got there, it's the bomb. I love it. And then I got some moving right along. I got some. Uh, really, I just got that tone over there. Now that's a kind of a spicy um, pepper. But I didn't have any of the, uh, the cayenne pepper, the, the powder type pepper I put in there. So I'm just going to put maybe about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half of that there, uh, the, the red pepper fleece. And guys, you see, um, I'm going to go I'm gonna go behind there. I got some onion, I mean it's garlic powder, I mean gar granulated garlic. And I wish it was some granulated onions, but I couldn't find none of that in the stores, guys. Been hard, hard to find thing, but I'm gonna use maybe about a tablespoon of that uh, gran, uh, that uh, granulated garlic, and probably maybe about two, two to three teaspoons of that that garlic uh, onion powder, and then I got some vinegar over there. I'm gonna uh, sprinkle approximately two tablespoons of that vinegar over there. You'll see how I do it. I'm just giving you approximate amounts, and then um. Oh, that what's that? Oh, what's that? Oh, that's the olive oil. Okay, I got the olive oil over there. And once I get these ribs washed and pat dry, I'm gonna rub them down on both sides, the back and the front, with some uh, uh, olive oil to help the uh, rub stick on it well. And then I got the uh, sea salt and the black pepper. I'll be using just one teaspoon of that sea salt and about. Um, probably a half a teaspoon to three-fourths of a teaspoon of that black pepper. And then guys, this is barbecue sauce like I I have up there. I'm just trying this out because one of my sisters in Christ here on here, here in our YouTube family, she sent me this. Well she always sent me stuff that's you know she just just she just kind like that. But she said this was her favorite uh barbecue sauce and she um wanted me to uh to try it and it's called what is it that's rudy rudy rudy's, mm -hmm. rudy's, rudy's barbecue sauce so we're gonna try that and see how that do i'm gonna taste a little bit of it first to see what it's all like what it's about and then guys but then guys i got this other season over here sitting off by itself and it's uh it's a barbecue seasoning and uh, the reason that I like this, and it's my favorite, been my favorite for quite a few years for using uh, when I do my oven. I don't have to worry about it when I put it out there on the charcoal grill. It gives it not not necessarily a charcoal flavor, but it's like it make it uh, taste like you've been on, uh, it been cooked on flames of wood or something like that. I like that taste. So that's, but the reason I got it over there, I'm not going to mix that into the, uh, the rest of the spices that I have mixed up into what I'm going to rub on, 
once I get all of that on, when I, once I get all that rub on, I'm going to be sprinkling that on the dike in the front right by itself. So that's where I can get the best of that flavor. And then, guys, I want you to see my roasting pan over there. Been had it for many, many years. And I have another roaster that I uh, do ribs in, but this is my favorite. I'll show you how I'm going to fix that up to, um, uh, to cook my ribs in it. So that's the that's the roasting pan, and you see it has some uh, it has like a what you call that in the bottom, like a right or right ribbit ribbit uh, rib, <laughs> rib 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 dairy. Yeah, I was a raised like, raised bottom. Yeah, it's just like it's a rack. You know how roasters are made; they have like a rack in the bottom of it. That's that's you know just kind of built in. Uh, like I said, I wish I could find another one of them. I've been, I can't tell you how many years I've been had that pan, and it's just the absolute best. But when I, when, especially when I bake grills, but I use it for other things too. And then I got that bowl over there, and I'm just going, and I'm going to be measuring the seasoning. When I come back, all the seasoning is going to be over there in the bowl. And like I say, my uh, uh, ribs going to be washed and cleaned up. I'm going to take my scissors and trim off any excess fat and and uh, anything on there I don't want. I don't pull any membranes off my roast, off my ribs and stuff. I don't do that, but they be so tender and stuff like that. You uh, um, you you'll see if you try this recipe. And I tell you now, I will be baking these ribs on 325 degrees, guys. In case I forget to uh, say that when I'm when I put it in the oven. It would be 325 degrees, 325 degrees. I kind of slow roast them, and I think that way that helps them, the flavor just marinate in. Like I told you, I think it's the technique I use that make my ribs just over the top. And um, and uh, how long, huh? How long do you bake them? Um, uh, two hours. Well, it's according. Sometimes you can get. Ribs, even though they're supposed to be tender, they may not be, and then sometimes you may not have to go that long. But uh, normally I do two hours. Two hours. You know, I don't do all that there cooking it, fall off the bone to the this end, that there. Uh, I, I feel that you can go too far with that and just overcook it and just take away some of the flavors and stuff in it. So I normally do it two hours, and then um, I'll uncover it, come back, and and then base it down with my sauce and uh and then I'll let the sauce bake in. I'll show you all those when I get to it guys, but I'm just trying to cut down on some of the time uh explaining this at the beginning of it. So when I come back and I start doing what I'm doing with it, you'll know what what I'm where I'm at and what you know what's going on with it. So uh did I cover about everything to 325 mm -hmm. degrees and all that? And then you got to have foil, guys. I'm going to wrap my pan in foil, and then I'm going to wrap the, uh, I'm going to wrap the bottom of it in foil, line the bottom of it in foil, and then once I get the ribs and everything set up in there, then I'm going to cover it in foil. Very important. Okay, guys, I'll be back when I, when I come back, we're going to get these ribs seasoned up and put in the oven and you'll see what they're looking like after I clean them up and everything so uh, I'll be right back guys alright you're back okay guys we're back and I got the ribs all cleaned up let me show you this pan guys before I get started grab my hand up a little bit more this is the way I got the foil in this pan and this is heavy duty foil I always try to use heavy duty, but you know, you can double the other, just regular aluminum foil up. But I like to put the heavy duty in there like that. And, uh, me and guys, I, uh, I spray just a little of whatever kind you got. It doesn't matter. I spray just a little cooking spray on it. I'm going to sit that back out of the way. Can we get let me show you something else guys this is the fat right here that I trimmed off the ribs and I am gonna be cooking both because Chuck asked me to to go ahead on the cook too and I uh, experiment with the um with what that um the, with the grill with the other thing but this is the fat 
I took off. I was real. I was really disappointed in these St. Louis style reels, guys, because it's normally so. Will you put that over there for me, Chuck? And pass me that other. And then this, um, this right here, guys, is some of the other that I trimmed off of it. That flap. I don't know how to keep that on my rib. I cut all of that off and use this for something else. And that's what I'm gonna be uh, testing that other grill out with this. I'm gonna pull a little more of this fat off or whatever, but they just wasn't really the type of good ribs like they normally be. And uh, so, so much for that. But I, I'm starting these ribs on the back side, guys. On the, what bone I'm at, I do not take, I, I do not take that membrane off, but if you want to take that membrane off, you do it. I tried, a friend told me about she took it off and she had great success with it, but I did that and it was years ago. And I said, never again. I never could figure out the uh, purpose of it, of taking it off and everything. So, okay, I'm going to go in and uh, sprinkle some uh, this olive oil right here on this back side. And then I'm just going to rub it in real good. Just massage it into your meat real good, guys. Okay, I'm not going to wash my hands up. And now this here a uh, seasoning that you have mixed up, guys. Uh, don't, you know, don't worry about putting it in your container. Sometimes I use a spoon and and sp sprinkle it on like this here because a lot, a lot of time it may end up more. But if you know if you put your hands in it, don't put this back in your, uh, don't mix this up with your, back in your season or season or something and contaminate it. You can probably take you a, um, plastic bag and put it to the side and and use it but I don't know what could be done got in there. Okay and then you're just gonna rub that in on that side. Really really good. I say get a pig. Get a little pig a good old massage. Because I tell you he gonna it's gonna work for you when you get done. It's gonna all be worth it. Guys, Brittany love ribs like this here. Uh, she just loves hers baked or either grilled. She don't particularly care for the salt. I thought she would start liking it as she got older, but she don't. Just about like seafood. She never did care for the sauce on it. And normally when we fix it, when she was at home, or when she coming home where we're going to have ribs, we would just do a slab um, without the sauce on it. And she absolutely loved it like that because it be seasoned so well. Rinse this hand off real quick. Just rinse from the wash because I'm not spending the meat. But, uh, I like touching my other things with that. Oh yeah. I'm gonna go ahead on and sprinkle this. Uh, I call it my flame, my charcoal. <laughs> Sprinkle that on the top of it. And guys, normally, I sometimes I sprinkle my red pepper like that. But I said that's approximately a, tea, a half a teaspoon on each side because it don't really. And what that smell? You can't beat that smell. Okay, I'm turning the ribs over, guys. And I'm going to put more olive oil on this. And then I'm going to do the same thing that I did on that side, on this side. But on this side, that's when I'm going to sprinkle my vinegar, sprinkle some vinegar on top. Yeah, guys, I was a little disappointed in the ribs. But you know, ribs and stuff like that got to have some fat back to it. That's where your uh, tenderness and stuff come in. But I was like, well, oh, y'all done dead to it. The little peas and hogs. Trying to raise them out too fast and giving them something. It's not making them. It's 
clean as they normally be. Now this is a this is just a perfect way that they cut and trim them this uh uh and guys I'm I'm putting a generous liberal amount of whichever one you want to call it simply because it's very very little salt in, in here that uh the rub that I use is not heavily salted salted and like I told you it's a perfect blend. I told you guys when I first uh, got on YouTube that uh, I, I like trying different uh, herbs, spices, and seasons and stuff like that. I just like trying it. If it sounds right or whatever when they advertise it, and I know because you can learn that what's good or what's not, you can always come up with some uh, uh Good, uh, seasoning. And then this this him seasoning that I'm putting on here, the way I slow cook this in the oven, it's gonna be just like that stuff is through and through the meat part. You're gonna taste every bite. It's gonna be just seasoned so well. To I see why Tuck told me, oh, I'm gonna cook both of them. Both of them. Uh, If it don't, if I don't get put it in some in the freezer, it, it, it's, I don't, I just won't. Now, you know them other spavery up, they're a lot bigger. And, uh, that's really not what, and these are, these are what, like, what's, tough when you pick these ribs. And everything's so expensive, so you can't go by the price of them, but they got the price like we normally get, but they just done cut down on everything guys. Okay. Let me see. Bring some of that out. Another paper towel, guys. Just a second. My oven is already preheated. Now I'm gonna get this vinegar. This rice vinegar, you could, but you can use uh, apple cider or any type of vinegar that you want, as long as it's not too strong. And I just usually just go over just sprinkling. Just like that. Then when I sprinkle that on like that, I try to get approximately about a tablespoon on each of the ribs. I go back in and sprinkle just a little more of this seasoning. All these spices and stuff. And all I can say, I wish you guys could try it. Make up your own uh, spices and seasoning and guys and stuff, but just know the cooking technique. That's what's what that's that's really what making make the meal. Like I say, you got to put the love in there, cause because you know what y'all what your taste, your family taste is, and all that. So I like giving you suggestions as to what I use that works fine for me. And you can use the same thing, and it'll be. But, I, but, but the reason I say I know just you can just use whatever because I have. I done did this so many ways, right, Tuck? Sure have. He loves it. Now he do all the grilling outside, but he want me to do the seasoning and all that stuff of the meat. Yes, and you know you ask him. And he have seasoned the meat before and did well with it. You know, so he just probably don't realize, you know, that certain thing, you know, at the time that he did it, just you got to put, you can't be stingy with it and sprinkling it like you're sprinkling it on the plate on for a baby and stuff. 
and you know as long as it's not salt or garlic or something that you're going to overpower your food I like to use the seasoning that I can be put on a very liberal amount of it and then and when it get in there and kick up them flavors and it ain't got too much salt in it now that's good eating I call it <laughs> gourmet eating right go back in with my fire my flame alright guys now that's going to be it with the seasoning let me get it in the um, move this stuff out the way. Yeah, I see I had some a little left over. And uh, I'm going to put this in a little, little bit of sandwich bag, a little snack bag. Cause I didn't, I didn't just put my hand off in it, but if I had a, you know, put my hand in it. Okay guys, so you're going to take these ribs, lay them over in this pan. Probably Brittany say like this, like so, like that, like this, like so. She typically mm -hmm. saying that. I said, girl, where you get that from? These young people, I tell you. Now it ain't fitting down in there. Exactly, and I didn't cut it because I want to look for all keepsy on the, the thumbnail. You know. A little bit more than what I look like that. Then I could wash a little of that seasoning off. Yeah, and you can just go ahead on and do these ribs like this, bake them ribs like this, and don't even have to put barbecue sauce on it. All right, guys, let me rinse my hand off, and I'll show you the next step. This is very important, guys, with the way I do mine. You just put these ribs in here, cover them, and put them in the oven like this. And you're going to slow cook them. Don't put any liquid up there, guys. No liquid. Now, because I always get, uh, I always get my seasoning and rubs. and got all the apples and all the whatever else kind of stuff, flavors you're trying to get up in there. But you do not need to put any liquid in this. And I will show you what it looks like when I get ready to put the barbecue sauce on it. Okay, guys, I'm going to get these in the oven for a couple of hours, like I told you, at 325 degrees. And I'll be back when I, I check it to see do I need to bake it longer or go ahead on and put my sauce on it. And then bake my sauce in it for maybe, well, how long it takes, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Okay, guys, I'll be right back. back on? Mm-hmm. Okay, guys. Uh, it's, uh, the uh, ribs been in the oven right at an uh, hour and a half and I'm fit to take them out and I want y'all to see me doing the first uh, checking and if I think they're tender enough and red enough, I'm going to go ahead on and put the barbecue sauce on it and uh, get ready to bake them out. Ooh, the heat. Alright guys, remember now, we put absolutely no liquid in here. It's just like I slow, uh, slow cook them or cook them or instant cook them or whatever you want to call it. 
in the oven. You know, I'm not a slow cooker on certain things. Put that over here. What happened? Let me know. Oh, you raised it. Can they see them? Mm-hmm. Come on, I want to see the liquid that's on there. Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Guys, you see all that liquid in there? And I didn't put no liquid in there. Let you know you didn't need no liquid in these ribs. That's where you make your biggest mistake with cooking it, where you got to put all that liquid in there. I'm just going to push on them. I don't want to get them too tender. Here, can you get the camera? Come over here. I'm going to show them. Mm -hmm. See it. I'm going to tell them to see the liquid. You come over here in front of me. I want them to see what makes these ribs so good. Not putting any liquid in them. That only takes away from the flavor. You see all this liquid, guys, that's in this pan? You didn't need to put absolutely no other kind of. Uh, if you want a different flavor to it, do that flavor with your uh, dry seasoning. Not something liquid you can put in there. Ain't none of your chicken broths and different stuff. I, you know, when people put up in them. And the ribs are just just tender. You see how tender they are? Mm -hmm. So, uh, really and truly, guys, these, uh, that last, uh, 20 or 30 minutes that I'm going to cook them with the, uh, I mean, in the oven with the foil off, I'm going to go ahead on and put the sauce on. And I had taste the sauce, and I don't believe it, because I always taste it and try it and cook it. After I cook it up, I know, after I bake, bake the sauce in there, I will know. I'm doing this all the way backwards. Always put it on the back side first. Guys, I can have a lot of heat, so don't worry. <laughs> These hands are tough. My guys, Brittany love them, these ribs just like this, just like they is. I can hear y'all now. Hey, hey, that ain't too hot. I said these old hands are tough, guys. Get me a paper towel. I'm going to baste this on here the first time. I'm going to put them back in the oven without the, uh, I'm not going to put the foil back on it, guys. There's one thing I did forget to do, and I'm going to do that this after this here first, uh, after I let it sit in there maybe about, uh, with this in basin with the barbecue sauce. I'm gonna pour the liquid off. Now you forget some sometimes you just forget guys. I usually pour I usually pour all the liquid off at that point 
except for little. But remember what I told you, just at that point, pour your liquid off. All of it except maybe about a half a cup full. And you could either turn your oven up to 350 or you can just let it slow cook right on like it is. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Maybe when I put the sauce on and baste it the second time, I will. Now when I baste it the second time, unless you want to, now it's going to be totally up to you. I don't usually put any on the back side. I don't like to over sauce it. I got my new ring light, guys. And it's showing up out the blind. Because I'm covering it up. Can you see? Mm -hmm. Looks like you are. That used to say just a scoosh a bit. Was that child again? A scoosh a bit. A scoosh a bit. I need just a scoosh a bit more barbecue sauce. Uh, Was that child again you said it? I don't recall. Yeah, I used to tell somebody I was talking about a scoosh a bit. I really gotta know what a, a scoosh a bit. I'm not probably saying it right with, with my flat top and say. I, at first I had said a scotia, then I gave it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you said it's a scotia. <laughs> Tuck says it's a scotia. Guys, this is going to be some absolute good eat. Maybe they wouldn't tell you it wasn't if it. I mean, to be honest with you, because I, you know, I doctor up my sauce. It's kind of the way I like it. The only reason I go somewhere else and eat them, and they be good and stuff, is just to keep from cooking and every now and then just want to go somewhere. But most of the time when we go down to that down, what's the name of that restaurant there? We get the barbecue from. Sometimes something just go and buy. Uh, I get that. Full Moon. Yeah, what's the name of that there, uh sandwich that I like to get? That uh, open face brisket. Oh yeah, that is good. Now, I don't cook that and that's always so good to me, so we always have to get two things. Okay, guys, I am going to put this back in the oven for probably about 15 minutes. And then I'm going to bring it out. I'm not going to show you me. I'm going to do the same, repeat that process, except for under the bottom side. Now, if you like it under the bottom side, guys, by all means, go ahead on and put it on, the, oh, on there. But I just let it, when it... Uh, Bake in this first time. I just put a little bit on that, a little more on the top, base it on the top again, and then let it bake in and the ribs are finished. So when y'all see me bake, guys, these ribs will be finished, completed. Okay, guys, be right back. Okay, guys, this is the finished product of the best ever baked spot, uh, bake, I mean oven bake. <laughs> <laughs> barbecue spare ribs guys they, I taste it I taste the sauce I taste a little piece of the meat with the sauce that sauce is the bomb I know I will be ordering some more of that sauce they got all the information on the bottle the website so if any of you guys interest in it I will uh, I'll put the website where you can get it I you know like I told you uh, one of my sisters in Christ, she she got she gifted to me, so I want to share the information with you guys. If you want to know, I wouldn't I I just can't tell you it's really good. It's the perfect blend of spices. It ain't got some sometimes uh, stuff have like this have certain spices in it just kind of stand off, and that always throws off a dish to me, guys. But this got the perfect amount of brown sugar and the and the little heat. Or the hotness or whatever you want to call it. All of that is just perfect. 
I was I was thinking it, it probably won't, especially if we took use it out there on the grill. Uh, it's, uh, I won't have to add anything else to it. How did you like it, Tucky Taste? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a good it's a good sauce, it really. Is. I'm certainly gonna try some more of it. Yeah, we still got a, a, enough of it. We go on the grill. We try to we always grill quite a bit, guys. I'm just kind of talking and and uh. Trying to get a couple of more minutes out of it before I cut, uh, before I uh, come over and cut and uh, show you guys what it looked like on the uh, inside. But guys, I want to take this minute and tell you I want to shout out a couple of content creators, and I think I'm going to start that, especially when they come over to my channel. They have tried one of my uh, recipes and stuff on there and did it. And uh, I just want to I want to show them support. I I like showing support to guys. Uh, I mean to their content creators, especially if they are kind enough to uh, when they do uh, one of my dishes or recipes or whatever that they uh you know they kind of shout me out. But uh, check over in the uh, in my community page, guys. Uh, it's a uh, the name of her channel is. Keeking it with Lynn. You know how to spell keeking it and then L Y N N. Guys, I enjoyed that lady. <laughs> I enjoyed her so when I was watching that video when I seen the maybe I, I think I ran across it on my own. It was on television the first time I, you know, seen it, you know, because most of the time when I'm watching YouTube channels, it's on television, so I can't say anything. But she had a she doing some other things in the video. But she had, she tickled me. She really tickled me. I said, she is straight up. <laughs> I like straight up people. But she was talking about um, how her grandmother, you know, the elders and stuff, they like eating what they like to eat. They, they ain't trying to hear some of the stuff that we want. And I think that they, that's what uh, they should have. And then she had was talking about a, you just have to go and check a channel out and listen, guy. When she's, her husband was supposed to be helping her pick the collard green. I was I was just about to be rolling on the floor. I said she don't know me, but I want to uh, send her a comment and tell her I'm, I'm, you going I'm gonna have to get you to send the paramedics over here to get me out the floor. She tickled me so bad because <laughs> she thought even trying to get out of here for her with the, with the collars. But anyway, God, y'all, uh, show us some love and go over and check out her her channel because I'm doing the same now, going through her content and stuff like that and just checking out her videos because. I'm all for a good laugh, you know, good laugh and good humor and stuff. It's always a stress reliever. And I try to find channels like that when I'm not watching my little garden channels and all that. Because a lot of times, I don't even really watch the cooking channel, uh, guys, when I am uh, when I have downtime. I just mostly work on my comments and then I find channels and stuff that, you know, kind of relax me, whatever. And then I have another uh, channel, guys, I want you to go check out because, um, she did a video. I was watching a video of hers, and I hey, you know, maybe I butcher a name and twist it. My tongue get twisted up, and I say all kind of stuff. But the name of her dish was Lupa, and it's a Filipino dish. It's sort of I think it's like a a spring roll, and it looked. I said, no, I'm gonna have to try that. <laughs> I said, I, I know the person, and the name of her channel is Hippie Chick. H i p p y c h i c. I'm a. I will probably try to get Brittany to drop the links of both of them channel on this here video, guys. So if you be so kind to just go over and, sh and show them support, and I know they would appreciate it if you subscribe. And I definitely don't want to forget. Uh, I definitely don't want to forget to shout out my. Baby girl, Miss Britt Simone, she's over there doing her thing. She's really on it the first of the year. She's going full speed ahead, and I hope she continue. And she's doing good on her endeavor, especially with her keto stuff. I can't wait to she. I'm, I'm, I'm. I am really peeping that channel to see what um new she cooked with keto. I mean the keto. Is it the keto guy stuff here? Yeah. So I can tell her, when you come home, cook that dish. Because she have cooked some, because she she have had a lot of success with that uh, program before. Because she she was on that when she was here at the house, when she was in her, at grad school. She fixed uh, several things. Because uh, they can do some dishes with that cauliflower 
that really will surprise you. And Brittany liked trying different things. She get that from her mama. And uh, so um, she had, uh, so I'm, I'm waiting to see if she have anything new that I'm interested in trying and telling her, telling her to bring it up here. I think she did something on our channel one time and, I, and I'm pretty sure that was keto, those jalapeno poppers. Y'all go out and go out and check that video out. They are so good. She always fix me up some, and I put them, I freeze them, and you know I get them out every so often and eat them. That's the reason sometimes I don't have too many videos, guys, to put out simply because I the stuff I have in my freezer, I put it in there not to waste, and then I'm not gonna waste, and then I just be a lot of time. That's what I take it out, and we'll be making a meal out of that, and that's what I be having and we don't be doing any cooking so guys I think my ribs is cool enough for me to uh go over and cut one and let y'all see what it's what it what it's doing and and uh the um you know the tenderness of it and it I cooked them two hours all together guys two hours now if you have some and you test them and you think they need to go a little longer but these already some like tender ribs. I cooked them two hours and you see how I baste them two times and uh, I just put that sauce on it uh, just like it was. I didn't mix it with anything or whatever and I'm just kind of ready to uh, taste some so when Tuck sort of move over I'm going to come over with the knife guys and, uh, and I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to go ahead on and end this video. I just wanted to talk to you guys a few minutes because you know if you cut ribs um, when they're real hot sometimes they, they, they'll try to tear up and I don't care about them tearing up but I just want a good shot for you guys you see my cutting board you see my cutting board I thought I had it out over here Got quite a few. One for vegetables, as long as it ain't raw meat. Thought I had it out, but that's all right. Excuse me, Tuck. Just rinse it off a little bit. I always do the rib cutting. I think he'd be, what you be scared I'm going to cut myself? Every time I get to work with a knife, Claire, be careful. Like, mm, I've been trying to cut my sister so I can sample them. <laughs> you so silly. Uh, oh, that's when you be wanting to do all the cuts so you can eat all that you Let's see which one is a good one. What about this one, Tuck? Either one of them, they look about the same. <laughs> Guys, uh, let's go back and cut it smaller. Put the bones at. Trying to cut on the bone. Well, that's exactly what I did. I can't see. Y'all got to realize that the lights are blinding them now. Look like you were right in the right place there. No, that was a bone when I went to try to cut through it. It was a bone. Guys, see what it looked like up in there. Guys, if you think I'm joking about this is some good eat, just try it. Look at that. 
perfectly cooked. Okay, I'm gonna cut another piece where I can see. I don't know why that this everything kind of wrong this this thing. I thought I cut all that bone off when I went across so like that. Looks like you're cut. cutting it at an angle. Oh really? Oh yeah that was that one up there was in there. How about this? I'll just do it like that. Now them bones. My gristles are so bad. You talking about some good eat? With some good eat. But we're gonna fix it some potato salad. I don't think I'm gonna fix no collard green. Potato salad and baked bean, how about that? Mm -hmm. Sounds like a early <laughs> wash my hands off guys and I'm I'm getting ready to end this video. Video. So I I I done told you about the best ever spare ribs, showed you how to cook them. And now it's up for you, up to you, to do your thing. If you want to be able to do these type of ribs at home yourself and not having to go to the grill, you uh, you won't be disappointed. So guys, uh, uh, you know the spiel. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Share out my video, and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell. So that you can be notified when I'm up uh, uploading, uh, when I have uploaded a new video, and uh, leave me a comment down in the comment section as to do y'all cook how close this was to the way y'all barbecue. Uh, do y'all barbecue oven barbecue spare ribs? I get it right after a while, but I don't have to worry about my game. I got the best game ever. On this YouTube channel, y'all leave a y'all you do you guys do not sweat the big stuff. How they say it? Do not y'all do not sweat the little stuff and everything little. Some which way I heard that saying one time, and I know I just got it wrong. But things that little petty stuff don't matter. Y'all don't make no big deal out of it. And I'm not worried about the rest of them that do. Because you know what? I know they're not supporting me. Because you guys that's been around here with me these years that I've been on uh, Facebook. I mean, you, YouTube. Y'all just really have been some loving people. And I appreciate you to the highest. And I look forward to doing this in 2022. Uh, but I'm going to bring some different stuff this time. I mean, I'm going to try to bring some different content. I don't know exactly what it it's going to be, but uh, I hope it's nothing going to be uh, boring you. And like I said, I have those uh, channels. I don't know whether I'm going to put them on my community page. or I'll probably put them in a, I'll pin a, pin a comment and put them here on this uh, video. So y'all go check them guys out, show them some love, and tell them May May sent you. And I'll see you guys. Remember what I always told you guys? Think positive, very important, important, and use your common sense. And they may love you guys. Bye. Bye, you guys.